Millennial women have been going to TikTok in droves to bemoan their singleness. And there have been a lot of examples of this popping up on the timeline recently, but one went extremely viral. This girl just went on a rant about how she can't seem to find a man, and I think we should investigate why that might be. So let's let's hear it from her. Let's uh, let's watch this video first, and you guys can make up your own mind. Let's see what she has to say. First of all, I still say she looks like Rachel Zegler there. That's my Kinda. first uh, my first takeaway. Mm -hmm. Sick and tired of just everything right now. I the rain's really helping hit this. Everyone hit is so yeah. quick to say the ambiance. Stop doing this. Stop thinking like this. Stop doing like. Stop telling me I'm wrong. I have literally. That was the most woman thing a woman has ever womaned before. <laughs> Let's continue. Uh, <laughs> I literally convinced myself at this point based on everything that everyone's telling me, my therapist, my family, my friends, that I'm just doing everything wrong. I'm healing wrong. I'm thinking wrong. I'm training wrong. I'm, I'm doing relationships wrong. Everything I do is fucking wrong. And I'm so sick of it. Stop comparing. It's not even about comparison. Like I genuinely just want love in my life so badly. It's literally not about anyone else. It's just about me and what I want. You're wrong. And, and being fucking over the fact that I don't have it. I feel like I have done so much work on myself. I have built a beautiful life for myself. I'm happy with my life where I'm at, my job. I'm successful. I'm independent. I'm healthier than I've ever been. I take such good care of myself. Truly the only thing I'm missing in my life is someone to enjoy it with. I'm picturing like a camera from outside the car because the, the her phone's like low and it just looks like she's talking to herself in the car. You know, well, she she is, but she, she is talking to herself in the car. Yeah, um, that could also play, play. Maybe the maybe the man of her dreams is like right outside the car, and he saw her talking to herself, and he just kept walking. Yeah, he was like, never mind. And I'm so sick of waiting. Like, when is it going to be my turn? What more do I have to do to fix myself before I'm just allowed to be happy? Before I'm allowed to meet this universe soulmate person that God supposedly has for me. How much harder do I have to pray and manifest and wait? I feel like I'm being punished for something I didn't do. That's a And I'm just so tired. I'm so tired. I... I don't want I don't expect a lot. I just want love in my life so bad. I want my life partner. I just Am I just supposed to be alone? Like, is that the message that this beautiful life I've built for myself, like it's just supposed to be me in it alone? Like, I know I have my dog and I love him so much, but like, I need <laughs> love. All of my friends have their fiancés and their boyfriends and their husbands that they prioritize. Like, as far as I'm concerned, I've been left behind. Maybe it's because they prioritize them. I mean, I can't speak. Like, I don't know and what her, I really just want her deal to is, but like, find that person that matches my energy and wants to build a life with me. Okay, like what everybody wants. Like, yes. she's not like it's not like some unique position that she's in, and so. It's sad when someone is insisting to a camera that they're happy when, you know, obviously you wouldn't be making this video if you were happy. And it's mm -hmm. fine if you just admit that you aren't fulfilled with where you're at in life. Um, I kind of feel like that's what she was saying, wasn't it? Just, it, she, she's insisting, I'm happy. No. She's saying, I'm happy. Well, you're clearly not happy. And that's fine. Um, but it's, it's ironic because she's saying, I've built this life for myself. I have this, I mean, I... I I'm very healthy, I take good care of myself, and I have a dog, and I have the, uh, you know, she probably provides for herself on a single income, and she has a good career and everything, and she is obviously attractive. I think she's a, um, a actual uh, fitness model or something like that. Something so, like that? Yeah. Yeah, uh, and then, but then she says, I want to build a life with someone, but she's it's like, all, literally you already, already yeah. you already built yeah. 
your life. She want what she's looking for is she's looking for some she's looking for a guy to join her existing life. And most of the time guys are looking to build something of theirs with the woman. So like the guys want to do their like the I suppose what guys should want to do and what the, mm-hmm. the guys generally want to do is like they want to do their thing with the girl by their side. They don't want to join an existing life that's already like you know she she's got everything she she's like i've got everything i want except for the guy and it's like you built all the stuff without the guy now the guy's gonna feel like what do you need me for together yeah what's 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 the point of me you know like the guy's really gonna be like what's the point of me being in your life like you've built it all you know well for some i for some men i think that's true but i think a lot of men out there feel like they want to do the kind of guy she she wants though but the kind of guy she wants because sure. if, if 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 you're like I've got this I built this great life right and I've done all this stuff, and there's a dude that's like oh man I can just slide in here and sit down on the on the couch and play video games, she's not gonna like that guy. That's she why the wants... Gen Z men are looking for girls well, yeah, like her exactly, so they can yeah. be. But that's the with thing, the like mommy. the, so the girl, a, like she, but she wants mommy. she wants an achieving guy, like yeah. you know she does. She's like I, I, she's not attracted to like just you know. But the achieving guy has already taken or wants to build something with you yes. know so it's like it's if you if you, well, you build know, your... like the phenomenon of like a placeholder gf is kind of the gf that's waiting around while the guy is building his life and then suddenly he feels like you know what i'm gonna i'm gonna upgrade and then he lets go of the placeholder gf and gets married two months later like that's a common phenomenon i've heard people complaining about where there are guys who just you know take the route that she has taken uh, evidently they build their life and then they look for the partner the the woman to come join it that's generally the male mode of maybe of it would help right her now. to to talk to her friends that she talks about she seems to be very acutely aware of all her friends who are in successful relationships and ask not just how you made it work but maybe when did it start and did you build a life with them or did you settle into a life that was already built with them and my guess obviously not knowing any of them is that the story would kind of skew more towards they built a life together and they've been yeah. uh, they've been a couple for an extended period of time I mean that's very hard to start later I know that it's harder nowadays to meet people because of the way that like life is with everyone being kind of engrossed in their phones and and it's harder to meet like normal relationship type people. I get that. Like if you're looking for hookups, there's apps for that. But if you're actually looking for a regular relationship, that's more difficult. Um, And she's probably used to it being easier because she is a pretty young girl. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know how long she, how long she been single. Has has she been single for like six months? And then did she say that she's like, uh, the second she said my, my therapist, I was like, the the achieving guy doesn't want to date the girl who's going to bring a bunch of therapy speak into the relationship. Sorry. <laughs> well, she wasn't using any of that in the video. Yeah, to be I mean, fair. I, I can't speak for, I can't speak for like whether or not like, if she, I don't think she's like a problem or whatever. But it's like at the same time, it's like she's like, she's looking for something that like, if she wants it like a if she if she's looking for like a high achieving like dude that's not going to be considered a pile by her friends mm-hmm. it's like he's not looking for her he's not look well it's not that he's not looking for her it's just he's looking for someone that can do like he's looking to like a journey together not like that, oh well that's what i'm saying he's, he's like, not yeah, looking for her exactly. he's not looking for somebody that has this, the qualifications that she does yeah because because for a woman like for a man like a man like for a woman looking at a man that has all those things she's like cool he's successful like these things make him attractive men don't see success in business and stuff like that as as attractive it's like they're just like six of one half a dozen of the other they don't care they're like oh cool well that's cool that you did but like you know that's not the stuff that attra- that makes men attractive to women you know and she's asking a lot of questions but the sad thing is she's not asking questions she thinks they're it's almost like she wants them to be rhetorical because in the beginning she said everybody's telling me i'm doing this stuff wrong and i'm sick of it so why ask questions you don't want the answers to the poor girl just wants results is honestly. Well, I, I think my main reaction to this was this is not something that you should bring to the internet. Correct. You shouldn't bring like I think that people need to learn a level of like digital modesty, like not in what you wear, but in the in the things you reveal to the internet. And I've seen countless, countless videos from both men and women at this point crying in their cars, um, mm-hmm. ranting in their cars about what their most vulnerable parts of themselves are 
and revealing that to millions of people. And that is unattractive, but uh, also it's just terrible for you and your psyche to expose your weaknesses um, and your, your pain to a bunch of people who quite frankly don't care and are going to rake you over the coals regardless of what you say. But it doesn't matter because just as many people will be like, oh my gosh, it's not your fault and she will get addicted to those answers. But in a way, like, it might not be her fault. It doesn't. I, I, it might not be her fault. It yeah. doesn't matter. She's uh, it, she's emotionally getting invested in the fact that people are validating that for sure. her. Sure. And that's not helpful. Sure. I but I understand the drive to disclose those things online. I just resist it. <laughs> like um, the internet, it lends itself to making you disclose yourself, not just by taking a picture of yourself, but. Mm. But using it as your diary and kind of like, it's very unhealthy. Kind of like in the way they say, like, if, if you're making a plan and you want to change, don't just tell everyone your plan because just the act of talking about it can satiate you in a way. Yeah, because what don't... happens is you get that because there's a dopamine release exactly. that you get from me, talking mm -hmm. about the plan as if you were doing it, which is part of the reason why there are so many people that love to talk about stuff they're going to do, but they never get around yeah. to doing it. So maybe don't talk about all like this and, and like sit with it and internalize it a little bit more and maybe the the problem will find a solution faster rather than using the internet like you said as a diary that kind of is a pressure release valve for something like this where every time something goes wrong she complains about it online rather than work to change it in the real world mm -hmm. again i don't know the specific situations and i do feel bad for her i, I hope that she ends up finding someone Can, clearly it seems to be important to her but it's sad. these are very poor circumstances for everyone but i think that the next video shows the guy that she should go on a date with yes Here why is this grown-ass man actively going around trying to meet someone naturally with a pair of headphones in his damn ears that's a good question day one of going places alone until i meet someone naturally instead of using so dating apps us what <laughs> what take the headphones out He's gonna meet Cheryl over here. He should put on like the over ear headphones. <laughs> yeah. Just awkwardly standing next to a woman instead of talking to her. This is fodder for content. This isn't even actually trying. <laughs> Well, it's only day one. It hasn't worked yet. Oh, Gotta give it more time. Oh. <laughs> You're a hard worker. Yes. <laughs> all hard workers. All hard workers. Yeah. Nah, it's all we do. I'm just picturing somebody looking at him holding his camera, his phone like this, and then wondering They're why immediately he's... disgusted. Yes, okay. <laughs> well, he's just the NPC who's standing in, you know... The, he's standing next to the bike rack waiting for you to start a conversation with him. Yes. Um, they should find each other. They need to find each other. Like what, what yeah. the, the best version of this would be like, we see him recording the video and in the background, she's in her car recording she's her video. <laughs> and exactly. it's, it's a meet cute. Exactly. But um, unfortunately, if that happened in real life, they would never talk. Yes, cause, because she'd be too busy talking to her phone and he'd be too yeah. busy looking at his phone. There's a romantic comedy plot in there somewhere yeah I where, just, where is sydney sweeney and and glenn powell we need them to make this movie right now it's getting really sad i see like two or three of these new like videos of millennial women usually pop up daily complaining about how I, they're hopeless look, in the man, dating it's, world it's content their their misery is content. I think yeah. I think that I think there's a couple things going on. First of all, women like to do that stuff. They like to mo they like to share their feelings and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And so if they if they do that kind of stuff in social media, they're going to do it with their, you know, with all of the things that that are going on. If they do um, that, and you know, like it's content. If she gets if she gets a bunch of views and stuff, that's the thing. the 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 problem with uh, with social media for women is it acts like porn for men meaning that just the responses she will get to her video of herself dumping all of that on you will be enough to satiate her for a period social of time. media is so bad for women because it gives women the uh it gives them all of the the uh, 
dopamine hits they get from being terrible so, uh, in in society. Like I'm just all like it, it just messes with their head. I'm not even seeing seeing from like uh, like saying that she was being horrible there. I'm just saying like she'll read the responses and she'll get enough interaction from that that will be enough to quell her uh, emotional state for a period of time until the next time when she just does it again. Whereas if she didn't have that, she would have to look for it elsewhere. The same is true for men with porn. We watched this other terrible video. Of it was. One of these I'm not kidding women. you that it was the worst thing I've was watched so in so sad. long. We're not even going to watch it because it's so long. It's too long for us to watch it here. But basically, this woman was like crying, and she said that she's been trying to meet someone for a while, so she goes out to these events. I saw that one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. and she she went to a basically to to sum it up. She went to this comedy show. She sat in the front row because she was early, and then nobody else sat in the front row. And every comedian was like ribbing her about it. And she was like, okay, fine. But then at the end, they were like, usually we do a raffle for this, but we're just gonna give you the prize because you were so brave for mm. sitting in the front row all alone. And the whole, the, she, she yeah. says, I went out to just to meet new people. And the she, her voice is like quivering with tears. It's, and it's horrible. This, and, I'm, and all I can think of when I'm watching is like, why would you make this video? Yeah, Why yeah. It, it, it really, it's because like either the dopamine hit is too strong, or some of these people are are making these videos because they don't have anyone else to talk to, and that's even more sad. Yeah. Is there is that I know that there's like an epidemic of loneliness among guys, but is that the same way with women? Do women feel like they don't have friends and stuff like that nowadays? Young women. I think the rates of friendlessness are increasing for everyone, but for men more so. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just, you know, the nature of being a man, being a man. Also, like they need social connection less than women need it. And yeah, the, the I think that the statistic of people who report having zero close friends is still growing overall. Between 2019 and through 2021, I skated alone for so long that when I moved out here, I had to like relearn how to skate with people again because it was like in 2020 it was during COVID and I would skate with my friends once 2021 came around, but not as much because usually I would skate after work and they would skate on the weekends. But the point was like I had to like relearn how to skate as a social experience rather than just something I did for exercise by myself. Similar to like how if you work out, you know, it's, it's usually mostly a solitary experience mm -hmm. unless you actually have like a gym bro that you go with. And stuff Did like you that. know a lot of guys in that world who met their girlfriends through skating? Uh, that that just no. I mean, it, it happens, but to me, that is maybe the worst possible thing you could think but of. But was it like a significant amount of them? No, very few, very very hmm. few. I mean, the number of women that picked up skating has increased heavily in like the last five to ten years, but before that, it was so rare that it it was almost negligible amounts, like probably. A point zero zero one okay. percent, but now it's like all I can think of is just like you're fighting with your girlfriend. Like, well, I'm going skating to clear my head. She's like, well, I'm coming with you. Like that. That just sounds horrible to me. <laughs> like I, I don't want it to be a joy. I, I don't want that to be something we share. Mm -hmm. I want that to be something that's uniquely my own. Just mm -hmm. like whatever you do in your free time should be uniquely your own because we're not the same person. We're two people who have things we do do together. We have common interests. Mm -hmm. We have common goals. But that doesn't mean everything has to be shared. Yeah. If anything, it should not be that. It should be, you should have, you should feel very, very comfortable in your own spaces. So. I don't think there's any obvious solution to this problem, but it's worth paying attention to because I think there's a growing cohort of specifically millennial women who were sold a bunch of lies she also who has are also the, very high achieving yeah. they have great yeah. careers and they're degreed and they don't everything like the, that they don't know that men don't value that necessarily but it's also it's a catch-22 because like a lot of people meet spouses in college or through work and you know it's a good way to be around people your own age who are of a similar social status wonder how many times she met somebody at her it doesn't job always work like, out sorry that i'm focusing way. on me and my career right well now. and also hr is like ruining workplace relationships too so there are just countless countless Everything reasons about why feminism is, is ruining down. ruining relationships like all of like feminism is terrible for relationships it's horrible for mm. relationships it tells women that you should strive to be a man you should you the, the the way to be a successful woman is to be a successful man, and and it's it doesn't give women an accurate representation of men 
or what's likely to make women happy. Thanks for watching. Listen to full episodes of Pop Culture Crisis on Spotify. Keep up with us on social media and make sure you subscribe and ring that bell so you never miss the show. Bye, guys.